over the last two years, the U.S. has been increasing IMET funding uh, to Equatorial Guinea. And in the upcoming or the current fiscal year, uh, the U.S. is intending on, on giving $500,000 in IMET to Equatorial Guinea, which was also an increase on the fiscal year before that. So what we're seeing is the Biden administration making this a priority and making the, the offering of IMET to Equatorial Guinea a, a part of our foreign policy strategy for engaging in the region. When you look at the human rights record, when you look at its state of democracy, when you look at all of this, why is the Biden administration doing this? And the reason the Biden administration is doing this, uh, it appears, uh, is because of concerns about China coming into the region. And so there was a, a story that came out a couple of years ago about China trying to secure a military base in Equatorial Guinea. And the Biden administration has, has doubled down and made it a priority to try to, to prevent that from happening. And I think in the context of everything that's been happening in the region, uh, especially in the Sahel beyond the region, and, and the situation there with the U.S. military bases and, and the U.S. basically being being pushed out uh, is taking a new level of urgency. And so the U.S. is basically caught in a security democracy paradox, and the U.S. is going with security. The issue of human rights, uh, United States have prided itself as a country that stands up for uh, human rights uh, or goes against people who abuse some of these rights. Uh, Equatorial Guinea is notoriously known for stuff like that. How are they able to square that too? You know, the national interest is trumping the commitment to, to democracy and human rights. And I think that's what's happening right now, in my own opinion. But they have a terrible human rights record. We all know that. Um, you know, there's been allegations of kidnapping and rendition over, overseas. Uh, there's been allegations of, you know, just widespread corruption. At a national level, the development of the nation. And so, you know, when you have a, a strategy towards sub-Saharan Africa, which has made it a priority, or at least says declares it's a priority, to promote democracy and promote human rights and promote these things. The administration is continuing to engage and continuing to try to increase its engagement, especially on the military side. And I think this is where I met specifically is problematic because the State Department has come out publicly and determined that there's torture and cruel and unhuman inhuman, um, punishment happening um, on behalf of the government of Equatorial Guinea. It seems that uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to just uh, interests. There is currently a vacuum. The U.S. troops are pulling out of Niger. So because of that, uh, the United States is looking for a strategic partner. Lost a base in Niger, which was extremely expensive to the U.S. taxpayer. And, um, and the question is, you know, what type of accountability, what type of lessons learned, what's come out of that? And, um, and I think that's the big concern when you look at what's happening with Equatorial Guinea is, you know, have we learned the lessons that we should have learned from what happened in Niger? And how will it turn out differently if the U.S. continues to try to use security as the way to, to advance its national interests in this part of Africa?